In 1946, at the dawn of hi-fi, Colonel Paul W. Klipsch, genius madman and maverick, changed the world of audio forever when he designed, engineered, and hand-built the legendary Klipsch horn loudspeaker in a tin shed in Hope, Arkansas. PWK's goal was to bring the power, detail, and emotion of a live performance into his living room. He nailed it, and the world stopped and listened. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the live stream with CoBuzz and Klipsch. Uh, we're glad to have everyone here. Uh, just to let you know what's going to happen in the show today and give you just a little bit of background, I'm David Solomon with CoBuzz. Uh, I'm our chief high-res um, music evangelist. That's what they call me. <laughs> do a lot of biz dev and all all kinds of other stuff, but that that is my title, and uh, I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, everyone at CoBuzz who helped make this possible, um, and especially our producer, who is um, uh, Neetha Viraporn, who's not been with us very long. She's been actually interning with us for a year, and now uh, has come on full time with us. So we'd like to welcome, uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Neetha and say thank you very much for uh, producing this. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about CoBuzz. Um, we are a high resolution audio site with, uh, with, with, um, resolutions up to 24, 192. We also have a download store too. Uh, that seems to be somewhat of a secret, but if you ever go to cobuzz.com and just hit enter the download store, you'll see that you can buy music, probably less expensive, high resolution music, probably less expensive than anywhere else on the net. So if you are one that likes to support your artists, your favorite artists, or you're just one who really likes to own your music, uh, be sure to visit us at the, uh, the download store. So, uh, let's see today. Uh, we have got, uh, we've got clips with us and it's going to be a really, really neat show because in addition to Matt Summers and Mark Cassavant, we are adding Jill Esco today and really, really super happy to have her She's uh, uh, she's a lot of fun, and we've been talking uh, we've been talking offline about her system, and that that we'll be uh, featuring in today's show. Uh, we're also going to be giving away a pair of the Klipsch Fives today. So whoever asks the best question, you guys are going to win a pair of these beautiful speakers. They're powered. They've got all kinds of great features, all kinds of connectivity, um, and they're really. Uh, they're really meant for today's uh, listener, I believe, today's music lover. If you've got a computer, they've got USB input. They've also got uh, other digital inputs. They've got HDMI. So if it were me looking at uh, a sound bar, I would certainly look at something like this first. But a really, really cool little pair of powered speakers that uh, that cost around $800 We'll be giving away a pair of those thanks to Klipsch today. And to go along with that, we'll be adding a six month uh, subscription, a free subscription to CoBuzz. So I uh, hope you guys uh, all enjoy the show today. And with that, I would like to bring on our guests uh, one by one, I guess. Come on in the room, guys. <laughs> Let's see, we've got Matt Summers. Hi, Matt. How are hey, you? Hey, David. I'm great. I'm great. Mark, Thank you. Good to Dave. see you, buddy. Hey. And yeah. the lovely Jill. How are you doing, Jill? Very well. How are you? Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. It's nice to be here. Nice to see your faces. We were going to have Jill on last week, but she was doing something a little more important. What were you doing? What were you doing last week? I Jill, don't even then? remember. Oh, it was two weeks ago. I was on vacation. It was two weeks ago. It was the last yes. one. You were on vacation. Yeah. And uh, so we couldn't have Jill on then. So really, really happy to have you on uh, this time. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, hello guys. How are you? What are you uh, up to? I think, uh, I think we all decided that we were gonna, that we were gonna bring in, um, some, some drinks with us Ooh. today. Let's oh see yeah. What, A little yeah. drink. So, well, what Cheers. do we all, uh, what do we all have here today? Uh, Jill, what do you got? Alcoholic water. This is white claw. <laughs> Alcoholic water. Okay. I think that's like, that's like all alcohol, right? Isn't it kind of all alcoholic water? <laughs> it's a miracle. But it sounds better like that. It sounds like we don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what you uh, what are you uh, up to, buddy? I've got a nice little Cabernet. I'm a red wine snob a little Ooh. bit. Actually, not a snob. I just like it all. Um, 
<laughs> a little Cabernet and a little uh, wood tinted metal cup. Uh, it's looking good. Mark? Very audiophile, Matt. <laughs> uh, I, I'm drinking a local uh, IPA called Wango Tango Terre Haute Brewing Company in my uh, Ron John glass. So cheers. Oh, cheers. Nice. cheers. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. everyone. I've got I've got a a, a little more. I, I decided to go a little more fancy than all of you uh, Klipsch guys. Uh, I know you're real basic kind of people, so I I went ahead and made a coffee drink. And Jill was asking me earlier, well, you know, what's in your coffee drink? And I went, eh, it's a uh, it's coffee. <laughs> I'll be probably Actual the coffee. least uh, Irish Irish coffee. No, no, nothing like that. Just straight out because <laughs> as we were talking before, the only time I ever drink anything is is socially the it's it's really i'm just not a drinker but when i do drink i i get very social may perhaps a little too social so i decided i, did, I didn't want to disrespect you guys like that <laughs> <laughs> a lot of i love you mans right <laughs> yeah i won't even go there because i just will never let myself get to that point um <laughs> let's see i'm going to close out this program that keeps dinging at me do you guys have any programs that you feel like pavlov's dog so we've got this program called Slack, and every time anybody out of a, I don't know 150 people are uh, are are, uh, are on this thing, anyone writes a message, it's ding, 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 and I've become like I just pop on that thing and see what it says. So I've I've just turned it off because truly, very much of a Pavlovian response that I've got there. <laughs> the knee jerk reaction. We uh, we have Microsoft Teams at Klipsch and the HQ. And uh, it makes it real easy for us to communicate. But uh, it is one of those things. As soon as you see that little red circle with a message on it, you got to go put that fire out. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what it is. Well, uh, we've got a really neat show uh, planned for uh, planned for you guys today. And we really going to pick back up, I, I guess, where we where we left off from a little while ago. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? Um, so, uh, well, by the way, there's no way we're going to be able to get to all of the questions when we're when we're doing this thing, because really, we're very much focused on the conversation. But if we if we didn't or if we don't answer your question during the show, um, check back on the live stream uh, feed l later on, because we will answer every single one of them. The last uh, the last live stream we did, we had about. I think Dan said somewhere around 9,000 people watching just automatically. I'm going, wow, that's incredible because we're on a lot of different uh, uh, platforms right now. We're on a lot of different pages. And by the way, if you shared this or you're watching from another page besides CoBuzz or Streaming Music Matters, thanks very much for, for joining us. We're glad you're here. Uh, but we were going to kind of recap a little bit on, um, on the last show that we had and um, – there was a couple of questions that were asked, folks, that I that I'd really like to pose to you because I'm actually as as someone working for Cobuzz, I'm a little embarrassed about one of the questions that were asked that we never even mentioned, which is how do you play Cobuzz through Klipsch? And and you guys are all doing it a different way. Some of you are doing it very similar similar to me, but. Uh, how how are you guys transferring it, and and where do you listen, and you know what all do you use, uh, Mark? Let's let's start with you. Every way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've got my PCs here, and I use a Dragonfly. Uh, actually, you all are. Uh, that's how I'm listening to the audio through this right now. Dragonfly through my audio system here at my desk, and then of course I have some streamers. I use. Uh, our uh, clip stream products, uh, which hey, is before PlayFi. you keep going, um, yeah. you were saying the dragonfly, probably a lot of people know what that is, but a lot oh. of people probably don't know what that is, but I've got yeah. one right here. I should have, yeah. should have had one on screen, but this is yeah. what Mark is talking about. It's a really, really simple little DAC yeah. Cobalt. That, that he's got it plugged into his USB and his computer. And then yeah. out of that, there's a little uh, stereo output. And and you can you can run that to uh, to your um, to your hi-fi. I guess that's the way you've got it done now, Mark. Yeah, that's through my desktop system. I've got fives right over here, and you can connect these also directly to your computer with the USB input. So that kind of eliminates the need for the DAC, right? If you want to use these as a des desktop system, uh, then of course streaming um, with our uh, 
stream product, you can go uh, with critical listening mode. So full, full, you know, high res playback through uh, the app. So you can stream Cobas that way. And then in the car, of course, uh, plug it in with uh, CarPlay and driving around, I always have Cobas going. So it's like I'm a, kind of a Cobas junkie, if you will, you know, always <laughs> have to have it going somewhere, wherever I am. <laughs> That that's that's really cool. Let's see, Jill. You we're going to be talking about your system in a little while, but you have just got a system that most of us would give our left arm for. Um, what do you, how how are you listening uh, right now through your system? Uh, streaming also um, Blue Sound Streamer, and, oh, those are and also through my headphone or my phone and my headphones and things on walks, but mainly at home on these speakers back here. <laughs> these speakers back there, the, like they're just ordinary speakers. Yeah, they're champs. Another thing that Jill uh, had, and we'll talk about this a little bit, but she's actually using a Parasound system, uh, which is way, way cool. If you don't know about that system, it's maybe one of the best values in audio, uh, but really, really great system. And I have invited myself over to her house <laughs> the next time I come to Indianapolis because I've, I've got to come in and hear this. I think this is just so cool that you've got that kind of system. Hey Matt, how are you doing it? I'm um, I'm doing uh, yeah. It, it, it's interesting because you know as you as we talked about last time, I've got the studio in the house, and then I'm also uh, active with beta testing, uh, like a lot of uh, Clips employees are. So the different systems are constantly torn down and put back together in different configurations. Primary listening, I'm listening on a pair of Fortes uh, with a um, uh, 12 SWI, and and um, I'm streaming through a Blue Note um, Blue Node. Um, two point uh, two, two, it's a two I, I believe, blue, blue sound sound. note, and then um, uh, you know, for the car, car play as well, um, you know, and then headphones, all all different ways, um, you know, in this in the uh, uh, bedroom, I'm testing out the new uh, Cinema 600 that's getting ready to launch, the sound bar. Um, so sometimes I'm streaming through AirPlay or Apple TV just to be able to get some sounds through there. Um, but when I'm critically listening, it's on the Fortes in the living room. Yeah, cool. That, those are great speakers. In fact, uh, we talked about this a little bit the last time I was uh, we were we were on together um, when Mark literally blew Dan and I away with the Fortes. We we walked in, and you know, as most places do, they'll they'll have a system set up. Um, and Mark said, "Oh, well, we'll come in here. I've got a, a pair of the Fortes hooked up." And Dan and I walked in. Um, we listened for maybe forty five minutes, and of course, as Anytime Mark and I get together, it's like, oh my gosh, play this, play this, play. Well, Dan was hopped right in the middle of that. And so Dan, <laughs> so we had another member going, oh, play this, play this. So I, I did this for maybe, maybe 45 minutes and I had to take a phone call. I had a, a CTA board meeting that always lasts an hour. So I, I uh, excused myself and, you know, walked out. I felt terrible about leaving those guys together because I think that was the first, that was the first time you guys had met, right, Mark? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, but, I walk out, I'm yeah. on this phone call. I apologize to him, but I've got to take this thing. And, and so I, I take the call an hour and 10 minutes later, I walk back in thinking, oh my gosh, I've left my, my, you know, my managing director with Mark and it with got Casavant. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> no telling what they're going to be into. Risky. I walk in and they're both just sitting there going, oh man, that was great. Can, can you put on you know, and they were still doing exactly the same thing when I walked out. So it was such a wonderful experience. And I have to confess, I'd never heard the Forte sound so unbelievable. Um, so at any rate, great job. I love the way you set those things up. And they're incredible speakers. So I, I could see you having those, especially as a musician, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that that really inspired me was I've always loved our heritage products. You know, the the Clips horns were one of the first speakers I I listened to that really sort of cemented the fact that that audio was was important to me and I wanted to achieve uh, that level of of listening. Um, but when we uh, decided to launch the Fortes, one of the things we wanted to include was a, a small a book about the history of the Forte and where it ha how it originated and how um, there's a lot of conflict about whether people think PWK had uh, a hand in the design. He absolutely did. He designed the crossover for that. He approved of the passive radiator on the back, all that stuff. But I was able to do a little bit of research with Jim Hunter, our curator at the Klipsch Museum of Audio History, and write this book on the history of the Forte. And 
through learning about that, I not only fell in love with the speakers, but I fell in love with the history of the speakers. And that's what I love about that, because when people come over and they listen to it, obviously the sound blows them away. I can talk about what what's in there acoustically, what uh, uh, technologically is happening, but also how the origins of the speaker started and how we got to where we are today. And so everybody wants a story to tell. And that was a really fascinating one for me to, to sort of discover. Yeah, yeah, they 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 really do. They in fact all of the heritage product really has a uh, they've got it sort of a grounded sound. It it's not that like you switch from a K horn to a forte and it's a uh, totally different experience. It's it's very much the same experience only, you know, not quite as big, I guess. Right. You know, what's interesting as musicians and uh you know, lover of live concerts, uh, you, you know what a snare drum is supposed to sound like. And one of the questions was, as a musician, are the can these be used as to monitor? Absolutely. I mean, if you want to hear what your snare drum is or is not doing, you yeah. know. Well, uh, and, and Clips Heritage has been used in some of the finest recording studios for years. Um, you know, even the mobile, an Actron, an Actron truck that recorded all the Willie Nelson albums and a lot of uh, Emmylou Harris. They have Bell Klipsches and, and Cornwalls in those mobile studios because of, of what they could produce in a very small space. Yeah, that's great info. A, qu a question just a second ago that I thought was interesting as well that really bears uh, – uh, bears mentioning as someone was going, I live out in the middle of nowhere. Neith, if you could maybe pull that uh, question back up again. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I live in the middle of nowhere and have to pay for gig gigabit yeah. internet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How much data does Cobuzz use when streaming? Mm -hmm. That is such a great question. Um, in fact, you'll get some really weird answers out there uh, at its core. I mean, if everything, if you're like going downhill with the wind behind your back and it's sunshiny and the birds are chirping, <laughs> uh, you could probably get away with three to five megabits per second. But I never go with that, even though it's possible. Uh, possible isn't real world. I, I tell people, look, if you're going to do this, do it with a minimum of 20 megabits per second. But these days, at least in most areas, that's a breeze. It's really, really easy to get that kind of uh, that kind of speed. Um, I'm up to a gig up, a gig down now for about 80 bucks a month, which I, half of it's for bragging rights. <laughs> I was OK with like maybe, you know, three, four hundred because my son's downstairs playing you know, Fortnite or whatever the, the, the kids are, are doing these days. And uh, but really, I wouldn't go with anything under under 20 uh, and if you got a family um, that's using, you know, a lot of bandwidth, I would even go higher. But really, if you've got a solid 20 coming to your endpoint, you're 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 going to be more than fine. And it really doesn't even take quite that much. But we all believe in headroom with everything that we do. And I believe in headroom with uh, with um, uh, Internet as well. And if if at all possible just plug it into your router. It's always going to perform better that way and you'll have even more headroom. So that would be the, the simple, the simple answer to that, uh, that kind of deep question. Thanks very much for uh, putting that back up, Nita. So um, I'd kind of, in just a little bit, I didn't even say this to begin with, but we've got a really uh, fun uh, part of our segment in just a little while we're going to be bringing in our music merchandiser su jan hong who's going to be talking about the new music that we're uh, that we're going to have this week but uh before we do that I, you know guys we talked a lot last week um and and matt i want to get to, to with you on your music however uh, before we do this i'd, I'd kind of like to uh talk about jill system just a little bit with uh with her and uh, Nita, can you bring up uh, can you bring up Jill's system? <laughs> Almost. That was that's going to be the next one. So, Jill, we, how long have you been? How long have you been with? Uh, how long have you been with Klipsch? Um, I just celebrated eighteen years in April. I'm a how, You don't even look. You don't look like you could. You are even eighteen. How how could that be possible? I, I'm okay. sorry. I don't. I, I don't believe you. I think you're lying to us, but we're going to go ahead and go with 18 years. That is really amazing. And what, what exactly do you do for Klipsch? I am the senior director of marketing and communications. So fun stuff, marketing and events and 
well, and you, you telling must... people in the world about our speakers and headphones and things and it's just yeah, a good okay, job. Well, I gotta say you must do like one of the best jobs of any of the manufacturers because like you guys have got like millions of people that are following you and I love going to the uh, the Klipsch Facebook or one of their um, one of their social sites because the um, the uh, the crowd just takes over. Everybody is so into it there. And if you if don't go there to say anything bad about a Clips product pro, product or people will jump all over. You've done a fantastic <laughs> job um, at the whole marketing of Clips. I love what you guys are doing out there. We've got a great team that um, that makes it a great brand, but also we've got great products. They kind of sell themselves. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. You're going to have to pardon my little dog downstairs. I don't know if you guys can hear him barking or not, but <laughs> he's probably saving our life from the mailman uh, or the <laughs> UPS guy right now. Uh, he's really good like that. So this is actually Jill's system. This is what this is what you see when you when you walk into the uh, to the room. This is really something else. A pair of K horns. This is a Klipsch top of the line uh, consumer product. Uh, the the video that we showed to begin with showed Paul uh, Paul Klipsch making these, and and this was like this was the first thing. And now, how long has this product been running, guys? Going on seventy. <laughs> Five years now. Yeah, almost yeah. seventy-five years continuous production. The longest continuous production speaker That's, ever made. That was the mistake that I wanted to correct that I made the last time. So, uh, Klipsch has got the oldest running production product uh, uh, available on the market, and that is really. I just can't believe that uh, nobody does that. Most people upgrade their speakers. You know what? Once every you know, once every two or three years. And these things have been the same basic design for, for you know, almost 75, uh, what, uh, almost three quarters of a century. Unbelievable. So, uh, Jill, I got to ask you, what do you, what do you listen to on these things? All kinds of things. Um, lately during quarantine and stuff, I've been listening, trying to listen to some new music, but then also there's some oldies, but goodies. Um, you guys were asking about some of my favorite bands earlier, and Wilco and Pearl Jam are my top two. Um, my Morning Jacket just released a new album, I think July 10th or something, so maybe two weeks ago. That's really good. Uh, Cage the Elephant, I like them. Um, Tyler, the Creator, is a, is a new one for me, but super creative and different. I really like that, too. Um, and then I think the the chicks that now the chicks just came out with a new album. You guys have been promoting that. So but I've listened to that a few times too. I still haven't heard it yet. I'm, I've, I'm listening to so much music. That's like, it's all I do. Sue Jan will, uh, she does a, a meeting for us every Thursday and every Thursday she goes, Oh, well, you're going to have to hear this. You're going to have to hear this. Oh, this is new. And Oh guys, have you gotten to the collection from whoever, but, we're always getting these unbelievably great recommendations from this young lady. And, um, and so my, my system is on like almost constantly during the day, unless I'm working on something really, really tough. And then, you know, I'll turn it off and, you know, do a letter or whatnot. And then, okay, we'll turn it right back on. It's so easy to listen to music these days. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm, so, almost, uh, I'm almost always, ashamed to say it, but um, one of my favorite albums lately has been Abbey Road and I'm I'm ashamed to say it because it's taken me this long in my life to kind of realize how good that album is. When I first listened to it on the clip horns, um, I almost felt like I was hearing music for the first time. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it was so good. It's so good. So that's one of my favorites. That does one not sound ridiculous to me. Uh, so good. One Dark of my all-time finish. top five. Mm. Yeah, the new the new mixes are amazing. Yes. The uh, uh, Giles uh, um, Martin did the the new mixes, right? Uh, that was um, uh, I'm trying to remember the original Martin that did the recordings. Uh, oh, George Martin. George Martin. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah, this is his son that redid these, and they are fabulous. If you haven't heard them yet, we got them on uh, high res on Cobus. But for the first time, um, the thing that I really noticed was 
um, you can hear Ringo's bass drum head. Um, and you hear Paul better than you've ever heard him. We were talking about this just a little while ago, and I'll, I'll go ahead and ask you guys this, but are you amazed with the way the, the quality that, that recordings have taken on in the last four or five years? It's insane. I, I, I would I would say 100 percent the the quality level has gone through the roof, not only in in new recordings because of the home, the availability of quality home recording technology, which I'm sitting in my home studio now, um, but also the remixing. Um, you know, then that Abbey Road is a great uh, a great example of that. It's almost like a film has been lifted off of the actual masters and you can hear the detail and the clarity beyond what you ever thought you could. So yeah, um, high def recording is at everybody's fingertips right now, and I, I'm just we're just seeing. You know, we talked a little bit about the Billie Eilish album, and and all that was made with just a few thousand dollars worth of gear in a bedroom with Phineas and her, and uh, the the ability to record that stuff at, at a very high def um, is all at our fingertips right now. Mark, home stu home studio recording, it's unleashed talent that's been out there and that's now unfettered, you know, totally unleashed to be creative and, and deliver to the world some fantastic music and talent. Um, not to get, you know, into the whole re recording industry conversation, but it has allowed people to capture their own talent. You know, that video in the beginning, that was Matt Summers' voice on that video. <laughs> was it really? That, that's yeah. really, really good. That's the, that me on, on uh, social media. That's awesome. But, but you know, I, I've heard some uh, recordings of people in the company. Fantastic, you know. And um, it's just, you know, after all these years, Dave, how long have we known each other? I mean, it's going on 30 years. I mean, we have scoured the earth for great demo material. Oh my and, gosh. That and so and you know, it used to get a little bit mm, mundane, you know, laborious, you know, and you know, after show after show, oh, you don't you have anything new? Right. That was always the question. Like, well, it works. No, what so now it's the opposite. There's a plethora of new music, and it's wonderful because as you sift through, you're like, holy smokes, what is this? What is this? What is this? We're able to, you and I, we've shared just in, you know, getting back together with, you know, this association, how much music have we shared um, in the last year, right? So, and then, of course, between Jill and Matt, I'm always hearing about new music, and I'm trying to share some new stuff myself. But it's fun to get into new sounds, new bands, new fresh talent. Uh, it's just been awesome. And then of course the quality to go with it. One of Jill's, uh, one of Jill's choices, uh, Pearl Jam. Um, I was, I've always gone, I mean, they sounded pretty good. I mean, pretty good, but could yeah. you imagine taking a Pearl Jam or a Led Zeppelin or a Black Sabbath or, you know, some of these were some of these guys that were just, you know, really uh, um, very influential uh, during the time we were coming up. Could you imagine what they would sound like if they were recorded today? I just can't imagine what John Bonham's bass drum would sound like. You know, everything's just so clean and so deep. There's got to be a whole solid octave below where they used to record, uh, which I love. I'm a huge bass head, but you, I don't want to sacrifice pure mid range and extended highs for it. I just, I like to feel that impact. But I, I, I was imagining like 10, you know, li having Pearl Jam 10 like recorded like yeah. by Billy Eilish's brother. I think it would have been <laughs> just even a totally different. Uh, Whole, a totally different level than it is uh, right now. Well, listen, we, we're kind of talking about music uh, uh, right now. And when we come back, I want to I concentrate, Matt, a little bit on your, um, on your experience, because Matt is not only someone who works for Klipsch, um, he's a musician, and he has got a ton of albums out that... Uh, that I just found out about, which I think is just really, really <laughs> cool. So after we come back with, uh, with Sujan, 
uh, we're going to uh, talk to Matt a, a, a little bit about uh, some of his experiences on, on the recording side and then on the playback side for that. We don't unfortunately have any of Matt's stuff, and I hope to change that. We'll get him with a distributor so that we can get Matt's stuff up. But right now I'd like to bring on our music merchandiser, Sujan Hong. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, let everybody go for just a few minutes. Hello, Sujan. Hi, David. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Got to take off glare. Yeah, no problem. No problem at all. We all have it. It's like you can't get away from it with those white screens behind you. I'm mm -hmm. going to get some glasses. Maybe they're just going to be clear, <laughs> but I'm going to get some that doesn't show that. Well, welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thanks. Uh, I, I, hear I, you've got... I heard you guys talking about drinks earlier, so I went and I got a beer for myself. Cheers. Here's to you. Well, cheers to that. <laughs> uh, so uh, we had our meeting this morning. We have a meeting, uh, like I said, every Thursday. And uh, every Thursday, uh, Sujan takes the show because she's she's got the most interesting stuff to talk about. And based on that, I asked Sujan uh, a few weeks ago, I said, would you just start doing this on our on our live stream? Because it is so very interesting and it, it is what we do. Um, Sue Jan, as I've, as I've mentioned before, has got an encyclopedic, uh, knowledge of music, uh, really so many genres. And when she talks about music, you can just tell it's straight from the heart. So when we say we are the music lovers, uh, Sue Jan is, she's like right up there, uh, if not more so than the rest of us. So Sue Jan, I'm, I'd like to turn it over to you and let you uh, talk a little bit about what we expect to get tomorrow. Cool. Thanks, David. All right. Well, another week, uh, you know, another Thursday equals another great week of music coming up. And this week, we're going to start with our album of the week, which is Makaya McRaven's Universal Beings E and F Sides. So this is an addendum to the drummer, beatmaker, producer's uh, 2018, sorry, 2018 album, um, Universal Beings, which also serves as a soundtrack to a new half hour documentary on the making of that album. Um, ENF Sides is assembled from cuts from the original improvised live sessions. So uh, it features, you know, the guests that were on those original sessions like uh, saxophonist Nubia Garcia and Shabaka, Shabaka Hutchings and um, who are British and another Brit, uh, Kim Williams. Um, who himself just released uh, a new album last week. So this is coming out on um, International Anthem, which is a great Chicago uh, jazz slash post jazz slash new jazz label. I think all of these guys involved don't really like the term jazz, um, but you know, for convenience sake, that's what we're using here. And this one will be out in 2441. Next up, we have Fontaine's DC, A Hero's Death. And this is the second album from the Irish post-punk band. And this is the follow-up to their debut, Dog Roll, which came out only last year. Uh, and it was, you know, much celebrated. Um, they got, you know, shortlisted for the Mercury Prize, like on tons of year-end lists and everything. So A Hero's Death is about, you know, the band facing and dealing with that success, like, head on. Instead of getting, you know, burnt out and 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 not really uh, being able to put that through music, they've uh, they've channeled all those feelings into this album, and you know, got the the buzzing guitars and loud drums, and there's like a ton of tension and uneasiness. Um, it's, you know, I say this about a lot of records, but it's a really good record for the the current times right now. Um, and this one will be out on twenty uh, in twenty four ninety six. Next up, we have Gillian Welch, Boots Number Two, Volume One. So a few weeks ago, Gillian Welch and her longtime partner David Rawlings they surprise released a covers album called All the Good Times, um, and now we get a new collection of unreleased home demos and reel-to-reel -reel recordings that were made between 2001's Time the Revelator and 2003's Soul Journey. So there are 16 here, 24, 44, 1. Um, there are actually going to be a total of 48 songs in all across three volumes. Uh, volumes 2 and 3 will be out later this year. No dates have been set yet. 
Um, but if you're a fan, um, you know, of, of beautiful voices and just, you know, beautiful instrumentation that works so well with those vocals, um, then give William uh, a try. Um, then we have Max Richter with an album called Voices. So you might know this contemporary classical composer from um, a composition called Sleep. Uh, and that is his eight hour long work based on signs of sleep. Um, or you might know him from his television and movie scoring work. Um, he's done like HBO's Leftovers. He did uh, the Brad Pitt astronaut movie Ad Astra. Um, so Richter presents us with a new work that was crowdsourced using recordings of people uh, from all over the world reading the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, which is a document adopted by the UN's General Assembly back in 1948. Um, Richter received submission in over 70 languages and he created this soundscape and that gets layered with music um, from what he calls an upside down orchestra, which means uh, it, it features three times as many cellos and double basses as it does um, violins and violas. Um, if you're familiar with Max's work, um, you know, there's like really deep bass sound. So you get that. Uh, and that will come out in 2448 tomorrow. Uh, and then in catalog news, so a few months ago, we got a high res download version of uh, Pat Metheny's 8081. And so then this Friday, we're going to get the high res streaming version of that, um, along with 10 other. Uh, additional new to high red album in his catalog, um, including uh, his debut Bright Size Life, which we see right here. Uh, this was originally released by ECM in 1976, back when Pat Wood was only 21 years old. It features Jaco Pistorius on bass and Bob Moses on drums. Uh, so all these albums will be available for streaming and for download in high res. Um, and the cool thing about the high res version is that uh, you get the booklets as well. So if you're like me and you love reading liner notes or the back of you know, LP sleeves, um, the addition of the booklets is just a great way to connect with your music in a different way. So yeah, we've got another great week of um, music. Obviously we get uh, some late minute surprises, some we know about uh, that I, you know, not at liberty to say, but uh, there are some new singles coming out tomorrow that I think people are going to be excited about. Um, and yeah, and as always, it's it's a treasure trove. So um, you know, you got to dig in there. Um, hopefully, the suggestions I'm making for you will uh, encourage you to try some new music. You know, click play on that album or that artist that you maybe have been hesitant about. Um, so yeah, another great week. Sujan, thank you. It's uh, it's always fascinating um, seeing uh, seeing what you've got uh, what you've got to, to deliver to us. I'm really excited about the Pat Metheny thing, especially in high resolution. Um, oh yeah. We uh, you just hang with me here for a minute, uh, and then we'll bring the others in because we had, in fact, this young lady asked a few really really interesting questions last week, and so I'm really happy, uh, Shelly Ann. Thank you very much for uh, asking asking this question and I think it's so relevant and um, and and kind of almost overblown in some circles but Shelley asked uh, how mainstream do you think uh, do you guys think uh, high-res audio service will be in the future most of the time people listen to music during their commute to and from work or working out in a gym so our main medium listening is typically through earphones and headphones how do you market to the general consumer who might not care about high resolution audio wow what a great question um first off i, I hear this from from time to time i'm sure you do as well sujan and uh the way i look at this is you never buy for the least resolute that you're going to listen to. You always buy for the most resolute you're going to listen to. So one of the things that I can say, especially these days with even fairly modest headphones and an iPhone, um, you really can take advantage of and hear the difference between 
um, low resolution or mid mid resolution to high resolution if you're paying attention. Some people just don't care. I mean, literally, my wife uses music as an acoustic wallpaper. And if I put her on the highest resolution music available and and then the lowest resolution music available, her personally, she's just not a music that much of a music person. She wants to hear something, but she's never like me. And, you know, you sit down and you're concentrating on the, on the music. So the good news is recordings in general are getting much, much better. So even if you're listening to them in a little lower resolution, you're going to be able to take advantage of the added benefits that recording engineers have. Um, however, if you do want to get really what they're trying to convey, really what the musician that the recording engineers want you to hear, which is not just the notes, but the emotion of the music, then yeah, anybody can hear it if you're actually paying attention. I would say you'd have to go one step above the old iPod, uh, you know, the, the little white things that just used to hang off your ears. I don't think you can hear any difference in those kind of headphones. But if you've got anything with, uh, with uh, a seal, that creates still like the new iPods or the new uh, IEMs that are coming out, then absolutely you can hear the difference. Sue Jan, you can speak to this because you're more of a music lover than you are an audiophile. And I'd like to just hear this from your perspective. Yeah, well, I just think that the education piece is really important. You talk about how, you know, the question asks about how the general consumer might not care about high res audio. I don't know if the general consumer knows that much about high res audio and that the barrier to entry is really not as high as they might think. Um, as gear gets better and more accessible, um, you know, I think that gap is just gonna shrink like organically. And then you got services like, like Cobas and people like Klipsch who you know, kind of make it their, uh, um, their life's work to kind of uh, share the information about the beauty of sound and, and that uh, there's a whole lot of, um, I guess, information and space that's just not being accessed right now, even though it exists. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's definitely going towards mainstream, um, but the education piece is really, really important. Um, I'm going to ask the Klipsch guys about this, too, because it really is uh, it really is very relevant in that. And, and here's what here's what here's where I would tell you, uh, Shelly Ann. Um, listen, if you, if you can, uh, uh, listen to say full res and high res for a month, two months, three months, and then try to go back, it, it's really difficult. That's when you start realizing there's something more to music than, um, hard measurements. And a lot of that's got to do with decay and listening to the room and being in the same environment that the, uh, that the recording engineer and the, and the musicians were in. So my simple answer is that even if you're not here, here are these huge differences uh, when you start off, um, you're not going to be able to listen to high resolution for very long and then go back. You'll, you will find out what you're missing. So with that, Sujan, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I always enjoy your, your talk so much. And, uh, we're going to go ahead and bring the, uh, Klipsch guys, uh, clip guys and gals back in and, uh, Hey, have a great day. We'll talk to you thank probably you. a little later this afternoon. Always nice to join you. Thanks. Thank you. So, Sujan, got a great info. I can't wait to start getting. Uh, I can't wait to start getting some of this uh, stuff back in there. We're gonna bring in. Um, we're gonna bring in Matt for just a minute, and Mark and and Jill. Um, uh, and then we're, what we're gonna talk about now is, first off, what do you guys think about? Can you hear the? Is even if you're just listening in your car or you're doing buds, uh, what do you guys think? You guys have got a lot of stuff that is small that you can listen to them on. What do you have in your hand there, Mark? These are the new generation T5s, uh, Mark II. You have um, the new ones? Well, I'm, you know, the beta <laughs> test. Lucky, right. lucky. Well, there's there's some homework that goes with this. I got to <laughs> report back and all that. Lots of paperwork, you know. So, uh, but what I was going to say was those, what a great question by Shelly Ann. What a great response by Sujan. Fantastic. And, and I just say ditto, 
But, you know, with these, for example, when you do get that seal, you get that excellent base extension. The highs are airy and the dynamics are so fantastic. These, these are a game changer for people who maybe have sworn off in earbuds, you know, these are a game changer and you absolutely can hear the difference. In fact, it's such a more intimate experience because it's so close to your ear. It, it, the, the quality factor is even that much more important. Somebody also made a great comment on here of streaming in your car sounds much better as well. When you connect your um, cable to your phone and you got a nice connection, clean, secure connection to your car system, airplay, uh, I'm sorry, carplay works very well. You can hear the difference there. You know, how uh, very few cars have CD players now. You, you just have to stream. But when you have that good quality connection, you hear that difference too on the way to the gym, the great comment there. But so high res is about your lifestyle too. And, and uh, Dave, your comment about, hey, try a month with it and then take it away and see how, you know, it's just like great audio. Once you have lived with it, it's hard to go back. Jill, you know, I remember early days, you know, Jill would listen. She'd listen a little more. She's like, oh gosh, that sounds pretty good. And then take it away. And then Jill, now look what how Jill has escalated to her home system. You know, don't take away her K-horns. I pity the fool <laughs> that tries to take away her K-horns. You know, not to mention Kevin, like her husband, you know, she, he's a big guy, you know, watch out. So anyway. That's a Mr. T quote. I heard yeah. that. <laughs> hey, love you, Kev. Love you. I mean, he, he can move them, you know? So anyway, but um, I don't think they're going anywhere, though. And, right. and, you know, I now I'm getting wound up because, you know, uh, I'm chatty anyway. But, you, you know, <laughs> give me, feed me a little bit of a craft beer and watch out. I've been trying to be good, you know, the first part of this, but now I'm unleashed. So anyway, um, no, no, great comments about high res. It's it's. You know, this is digital audio technology serving music properly and and now serving lifestyle. It, it's pretty easy to um, live with it and enjoy it. And But th what a relevant question for people who, you know, may not care. It's just not that important. But if you love music, I, I think the simple answer is if you just really care about your music, then you naturally will care about your source and then your playback device because they all serve music uh, without getting technical, you know? You, you know, Mark, I would jump in and your comment about the car is is incredible to me because your modern car stereo systems are capable of much more than what is FM, what FM uh, reproduces. You know, you're limited by that carrier wave and then not to mention that, but radio stations also compress and excite the signal and change it to make mm -hmm. it sound the best it possibly can even though it's limited. So really what you're kind of doing is polishing, you know, this uh, less than desirable uh, signal to try to sound the best that it can. But once you pop in uh, your streaming Cobas and you hook that in through your car play, then suddenly your car stereo is like new again to me. And if you listen to FM for a little while and then you go back to FM after listening to CarPlay or, you know, Cobas or any, any streaming service through your car, you suddenly realize the limitations that you've been listening to all along. And you're just taking that as that's as good as it can sound. Your car stereo is better than you're giving it credit for, for sure. Sure. Yeah, the, low, the lowest common denominator has been MP3 via Bluetooth. Ouch. Right. Ouch. You know? Okay, yeah. Jill, we're going to open up for you to make your comments. I don't, I don't have any. <laughs> so, Jill, here's, here's really what I would like to ask you, because you really do. When you're not listening to your K-horns, you're, you're just out and about. Which, which, uh, which Klipsch headphones do you use? Um, I love... We've had ones that are called X10s. They've been called a few different things, X12s or X10s, and then the teeniest, tiniest little headphones. Yes, right Matt has them. Yeah. They just pop right in. I've worn those for 15-hour flights. Even if I'm not listening to music, I still just have those in to avoid crying babies and rustling newspapers and, you know, back in the days of travel. I love I love crying babies on a on a plane because they can be like right next to me, and I'm with you. I like personally I'm a wired guy. My kids they really love to go wireless, but I like that extra I like that extra resolution that I get from uh, wire. And those aren't even very expensive. No, yeah, these are reasonable, and these these block. I mean, these will block more than 25 decibels. Oh yeah, of, of noise. I mean, these are effective earplugs. I've worn these to Sydney. Left them yeah. in, comfortable. I get off the plane. 
and you're refreshed. You know, you're protecting your hearing actually with the Klipsch. And so, that's the so, same. That's the same earbud, the same tip, the patented oval ear tip that Klipsch has done a ton of research on. That is on the new T5 uh, generation two as well. So you're still getting that incredible seal, that incredible bass, and that yeah. comfort story. Um, so you, once you find a winner, we stick with it. We've been making the K horn for 75 years. We've been making these same ear tips for what a decade now, um, and then no, nothing has come out in the market that's beat it. That's awesome. So, Mark, when we when we talk about those two sets of headphones that you were just that you just had on, can you give yeah. me a couple of prizes? How much are the how much are the wireless headphones that you were just showing? So, oh, you're gonna have to help me out, Jill and Matt, on the retail of these those things. Are, the T5 Gen Two, if that's what that is, is mm -hmm. one ninety nine. And how about the uh, how about the the wireless guys? And I know there's a couple. Of, I, I'm I want to talk about the McLaren also. They uh, someone just asked about that, and and I want to know about those because that is that is the coolest looking wireless headphone I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, the, the McLaren Sport headphone, which you can pre-order now on the site, um, mm -hmm. is a fantastic headphone. Not only is it a sport headphone that fits in your ear and creates a seal, they're also highly rated IPX, so they're they're waterproof. Um, they've got a great little ear wing that actually increases the seal, so it lets it stay in while you're working out, while you're moving around. Um, and then the case itself has um, extra uh, silica in it to uh, to wick moisture away. So after you're done with your workout or you're you're sweating or whatever, you put the put them in there, and it recharges not only recharges the uh, headphone itself, but it also removes the moisture that could cause any problems moving forward. So the case itself is also waterproof. You can totally drop it over the edge of a boat. It'll float. You can pick it back up, put it in, and your headphones are fine. Pretty cool. That that's cool. You guys have got all kinds of stuff like that. And if you are in the in the market, Shelly Ann or any of you folks that that, you know, I'm only dealing with IEMs and ear monitors or I'm only dealing with uh, with uh, earbuds of some kind uh, or that's what I want. Check out the Clips line. They've got some really, really good stuff, whether you want it wired or wireless. So we can do another session. Uh, we can talk about this stuff and we'll give some of the, the new ones away. I, I, I got to tell you, I think that, you know, we have so much fun on these things. I think we're going to have to do this like maybe once every so often because I'd really like to have you guys back on again. I can't believe that I'm even saying that because we've already done two, but I would like to get back to a couple of things that I missed a little bit earlier uh, that I'm super interested in. Um, Jill, <laughs> I, you've been working at Klipsch most of your adult life. When, when did, when did the whole, and it sounds like it might've just been a job to begin with. Is that correct? Um, I guess so. I mean, I'd never heard of the company back when I started in 2000. Okay, that would that would be it was just a job. So well, how long did these how long did it take for these guys to rub off on you? Not very long. I mean, we my husband was super excited when I got the job because he was like, they make the best computer speakers ever. Back then we had ProMedia 5.1 systems. Um, so that was the first thing we got. And um my my um, opinion on it when I first started was these are gigantic speakers and and I don't want those. But um, as you listen and experience that, um, one of you said it earlier, you just can't go back from it. So we had um, reference RF5s back in the day, and then I sold those, and we got some. We got the THX Ultra Two system. Mm -hmm. And I just had, I had a moment with those where I got goosebumps listening to some demo. And then um, I feel like we, I feel like Jim Hunter, who Matt mentioned before, was one of our engineers and a historian. He played, I think it was something from 2001 Space Odyssey. <laughs> and I got goosebumps again with the clip horns. And we came out with the 70th anniversary version, um, which you can see behind me a little bit. Um, they've got the Australian walnut wood finish and these cool metal grills and everything. Ugh, I had to have them. And I bought those. And um, I'm sure you, a, f a few people have heard me say this, but the house I lived in was about 80 years old and had little tiny rooms. And we didn't have anywhere to put the speakers. So it was a decision of, well, we could sell the speakers or, or build on a room or move or something. And we wound up doing the latter. So 
I've got this house now um, where the speakers fit behind me and Mark came over and helped me dial them in and, um, and they sound amazing. So I'm happy. I spend a lot more time here sometimes listening to music and it's kind of contagious where you just listen to, oh, now I want to hear this and this and this. Um, and thankfully to streaming services, you can do that. Um, but I do that more than I watch television. So it's fun. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. There was a, uh, Nita, go ahead and put that question back up if you would, because this is really, this is for you, Travis. <laughs> Travis. And, and we're oh, get, Travis returns. <laughs> so you must know Travis. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good so, boy. Is it better to first buy your clip chores or better to first buy the house that you're going to put them in first? What would you, what would you guys say collectively? I don't know. I'm going to let somebody answer. I'll say get, get the K horn, squeeze them into a 10 by 10 room and worry about the other stuff later. You know, <laughs> our, president, our president, Paul Jacobs, um, he was a salesman to start with at Klipsch and he would tell me a story. He's told me the story for years now of someone that he knew that had, um, they lived in a trailer and they had these clip horns in there, but that was their prized possession. And by God, they were going to live with those no matter what. So they had this little space, but, you know, made do. I, de I delivered Las Galas to folks in, in Florida, similar situation, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, they had the best of uh, a few things and they, the passion for music just motivated them, you know? Upset, yes. In fact, I remember, I remember, I mean, not to get too into the weeds on this, but you know, um, taking every Friday, you know, a little bit of a cash deposit as they work their way to get to half of the purchase. Then I placed the order, they showed up, delivered them. And then, you know, some of these uh, guys who work construction, you know, hardworking people who, you know, then continue to pay every Friday, you know, in cash, you know, from their hardworking. I mean, I ultimate respect for people like that who just love music so much that okay well if you've got that kind of respect then i'll i'm gonna make a confession i did i ever tell you <laughs> that i had las galas for about 10 years no did i, I ever tell so. you that Maybe so you i did. had these things in like Ooh. a 12 by 12 room the only thing there was only three rooms four rooms in this house it was a a living room which was like 12 by 12 there was a bedroom which was no bigger than a trailer bedroom it was tiny maybe i don't know eight by 10 or something. It was really, really tiny, uh, a little tiny bathroom and a little tiny kitchen. The only thing in this whole house, you walk in and the only thing that you saw were the two La Scala's sitting up there. Then you saw my drum set. And then right behind that was a little couch area. This place was so packed, but the biggest thing in the room were the La Scala's. And I used those in multiple ways. I used them uh, for a professional PA moniker. And I also used to listen to music, but it Absolutely. was, uh, it was, it was a really great experience having those so long. And well, when my, those, when, that shaped when my you. wife first walked in and saw this, she's going, there's something wrong with you. I don't go baby, there's something <laughs> right with me and you're going to love it. <laughs> no, that's all good. Paul just ordered some of the new AL fives. He's got them. And uh, he has a, a great listening space for him with some Aragon uh, components and, um, he's, he uses Cobas and, um, I was just going to mention that, you know, Matt, you, you can, um, also share, you know, I mean, we, we've done, um, a lot of events where, uh, you know, in a pinch, <laughs> I mean, Las Scala's, they're the same components of the Klipsch horn, you know, they're just yep. a slightly different enclosure and, um, they're we DJ, uh, we DJ, DJ oh, the entire, yeah. entire right. Barclays center for the rock and roll hall That's of fame right. reductions right, right at the entrance and the opening where, <laughs> Yeah. Th tens of thousands of people were coming in. Mark and I set up two Las Galas and a, and a pro amp and an iPod and basically blew the heads off everybody that walked in. They were so efficient and so powerful. Yeah. That didn't yeah. surprise you at all. Folks, I got to tell you, we're, we're all, we're almost out of time. And if you, if people have to back off now and leave, that's cool, but we're going to keep going for a little while. If that, is that okay with you guys? Sure. Yep. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, just, I got till eight o'clock. Uh -uh. <laughs> have to get another drink. We uh -uh. probably won't go quite that long, but there's a, there's a few things that we just didn't get to that I'm, that I really do want to get to. So if you have joined us for the last hour and you have to leave, we, we, uh, we thank you very much for, for coming, uh, for coming in and spending a little bit of time with us. And uh, so we'll see you later. Okay. The rest of you folks that are really interested, <laughs> you know, the real music lovers, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more with Matt about, 
what what he does from a music production standpoint and a um and some of his albums which i i found just totally fascinating i gotta tell you man i can't wait to get off of this call not because i want to get off the call but i'm dying to listen to to some of your stuff um so tell you're not only uh you're not only a music lover and you know a real professional with with clips but you're also uh music producer and a musician and can you can you tell us a little bit about sure sure i've had i've had a studio in my house since i was 14 years old um started off with my dad's two track and uh you know we're recording things and and learning as i go um one of the things that really changed my life was number one getting a four track getting involved with um uh, punk rock bands in the midwest um you know playing very young learning about how music works um, and then also um, just being able to to read um, the Mark Lewishon book about how the Beatles recorded all their albums was fantastic for me. That was just like lightning in a bottle. So I went actually as a young kid in my late teens, early twenties, and tried to recreate all of those scenarios that were uh, that that um, George Martin did with the Beatles in Abbey Road Studios. The way they recorded the the bass, or the the way they recorded uh, the, you know the Leslie speaker and all of that, and just learned about. Uh, what was the best way to do it? So if you're looking for a way to learn how to how to for recording technology, find the Mark Lewishon book called The Beatles Recording Sessions. That's uh, very informative. Um, but then over the years, um, I've always had this studio. So either my friends have come in or I've produced my own music. Um, and now I'm up above uh, 60 some albums on the website, mattsummers.net. Um, and each one is a fully formed um, concept piece um, based on what I was into at the time. So if you go scroll back in time down that uh, the uh, graphic you're showing now, um, you it goes back into you know the very first digital recordings that that, that I was making. Um, and basically, I just get a, a group of songs on my hard drive, um, give them a title. Sometimes there's a theme, sometimes there's not, and then just release it out into the world. But the 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 music has not been limited to any genre. I mean, we've done soundscapes and soundtrack music. We've done I've done cinematic stuff, punk rock stuff, folk stuff, country, uh, blues. Um, and even uh, things that wouldn't be considered music, sound sculptures, um, you know, ambient recordings, those kinds of things as well. So um, all of that has been in the home studio and all of it's been sort of pushed out to the world. It's something that I'm not looking at, um, you know, getting a recording contract and, you know, signing a, a million dollar deal out of. It's just something that I do as a hobby and something that I, it's a learning experience. So every recording is, a, is, is almost a different project as you as you embark on it. The latest one, you'll love this, Dave, is called Headroom. Um, that was the last one that I posted last week. Um, and it's about 40 minutes long and it's, it opens and closes with a, um, a cinematic piece um, that's uh, um, you know, basically a, um, an orchestral piece um, that was inspired by a trip that I made to the Southwest, to Arizona with my family. And then everything in between is sort of my reaction to this isolation from uh, COVID. Uh, including the middle one, which is a more of a sound collage called Psychodrama, which is about um, dealing with that anxiety that you deal with being isolated and still, you know, maintaining work and maintaining, you know, friends and family and all that. So really, it's oh. it's more of a audible diary. Um, and I will say that I have subjected Mark Cassavant to listening to almost every single one of over 3000 recordings over the years. Every time I got something new, I'm like, you got to hear this, buddy. Um, and we I play it for him. We have deep ties to, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We have deep ties to electronic music and just authenticity. And, you know, Matt, I mean, gosh, you know, we to the very beginning of our days working together with Klipsch, I mean, remember when you were down in the basement in 8900 building, Matt? Oh, yeah. And I would stop in and see you on the way in, and we just talked music and and um we would listen to mixes and oh, and, and all yeah. of that so a lot yeah. of the 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 clips uh videos and the soundtracks that you hear um i've either made in the studio sometimes it's uh it, it is stock and we'll put some of that into it but for the most time most part um it's something we've created specifically for that um and we get the idea of we want to talk, have a video that talks about the fives, for example, we need something rock and roll for that and it's something that having those tools to be able to just turn around in the studio and you know, kind of whip it out in an afternoon uh, is a lot of fun. I will so tell the music you music on the uh, video that we played to begin with. Was that your music? Yes, it was. And yeah. was it your voice, voice as well? And, and your... my voiceover. Yes. That is so cool. Wow. Oh. What? 
The it's power really, of Klipsch. It's the power of Klipsch, for sure. <laughs> I've been in pro audio pretty much all my life uh, uh, as an amateur and playing in bands and being a sound man and that kind of thing. And I got to tell you, that has been uh, so valuable to me on the consumer side because I because I'm able to understand the way things work to begin mm -hmm. with. As you know what it sounds team. like. You know what this stuff sounds like going in and what the microphone should be doing. Um, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, Even so your new album than that, just like just signal paths and the way things work has, has just really, really helped me a lot in this side of things. Sorry, Mark. Okay. So you launched this album after our first session, right, Matt? Yes. Are you going to give Dave and I credit for the title? Of I should, release? because we, ta as we <laughs> talked about headroom for probably 20 minutes. Yeah. And, but you know what, uh, to be fair, the folder was already named headroom before we had the okay. conversation. Okay. Um, all right. But it, it fits perfectly. Uh, it's a nice little diary. Okay. <laughs> well, we're all into that. You know, we had such a great discussion about headroom the, the last time we talked and, you know, that's what we're all about. We're all about headroom on from, from the very beginning. I'm so happy that recording engineers have discovered 24 bits or not even necessarily discovered it, but it's been made possible on their systems because now the systems are faster. They've got more, they've got more uh, uh, room. Um, and really that's kind of the only thing that was preventing it before. Cause if you try to make a 2496 recording, say even 10 years ago, uh, and, and, and you're just doing two channels. Well, you're, you're doing okay there, but what happens when you start, you know, recording 32 channels and 2496, all of a sudden you are using so much space and it's so hard to get to that even just from a, an efficiency standpoint, I could see why a lot of recording engineers wouldn't have wanted to do that, but more and more, in fact, I forgot to ask Sue Jan this, but more and more people are recording brand new stuff and, in, in high resolution formats. And, as a result, we're getting our new releases these days are somewhere in the 80, 85, 90% uh, range that we're getting 24 bit recordings instead of 16 bit recordings. Okay. Even so I have, sorry. I, I was just going to, I'm sorry, I got to add this because I was reading the questions and people are making, making comments about classical and the classical recordings today are so fantastic. The capture of this wall of i mean 100 plus musicians on a stage and the way it's captured but you guys i'm gonna take you down memory lane and i say guys but jill you too because you know that occasionally i will play a classical piece in the office as the final exclamation point with Klipsch horns because this was paul Klipsch's passion right he was a classical musician and he was left wanting after a concert and then he, he would check out the home audio products and it was like are you kidding so k horns serve classical music very well but also the early proponents of digital recording were the classical labels because of the silence the digital quiet you know and then the lack of distortion on the top end you know that dynamic what what more at the time you know was more dynamic than classical music in fact for acoustic output i don't know what is more powerful mm -hmm. than a symphony nothing. right nothing so so now you, you made a comment, I think it was last session, uh, Matt, about how these digital instruments, it's never in the audio, analog domain. It's always in the digital domain. So the dynamics are never robbed, if you will. And, and so we have this electronic digital recording, but then we have this, the classical, capturing classical. And, and you know, the comments here about love Kobas for classical music. I would submit you should you should and would love clips for the same reason classical music serving the dynamic headroom of classical music you know there think about the days of the composers you know Tchaikovsky all these guys who you know were met with uh critical not acclaim but you know criticism um the early recordings from who who did Rite of Spring was that Stravinsky yeah, um, yeah. So that was, everybody was like, what is this music? And it was pretty revolutionary, but they heard in all their glory, these, the, the tour, you know, the debut of these classical works with, you know, live performances today, you know, people are hearing these works first through an audio reproduction system. Eventually uh -huh. they may, if they're enough of a fan, they'll hear the live experience, but their first experience sometimes is right here with earphones. Think of that. Yeah, you know, so it's it's the reverse and and um, serving 
the live performance. I mean, we have to. That's what our mission is. But I, I'm talking too much now. So go ahead, Matt or Joel. Well, or, or. It, it, I would, I would also add from a studio standpoint, processing power is um, key to sort of this evolution. Um, being able to stream something from your phone to a, a receiver or a node or whatever, and and being able to have that high res and processing. Um, you, you even from the studio environment, you see that there used to be the guys that were into Pro Tools back in the day had all these decks of outboard gear to be able to offload that processing power and make that happen in the studio. Um, you know, after we went to tape and we went to digital at the beginning, it required all this outboard gear. And now, like we talked about Billie Eilish and Phineas, um, you know, that, that's a laptop and all the processing power in it is enough to do 99 tracks at, at, at 24 bit. Um, it's fantastic. So that has caused an evolution in creativity, but also in an evolution in, in uh, recording uh, techniques and quality. Here's something we've got going on right now so that we're not just speaking this, that we can actually give people um, yes. um, a, uh, a really good idea of what this is. So we've got a program going on right now called Music Gifts. And if you go to Cobuzz.com, I think we've got maybe it's 10 or 11 albums there. They're mostly all classical as well that you can download for free. You don't even have to be a Cobuzz uh, member or have a subscription or anything. Um, but I would encourage you to go there. If you're a classical fan, we have got some fantastic classical albums and that we're literally giving away for free because we're going, you know, everybody's suffering during this time and although we do have plenty of music that we can listen to um we wanted something that you could that you could download and you could keep for yourself and put it anywhere you want so um i encourage you to go to uh cobuzz and and download all of those free uh yeah. albums it's uh, mozart and, it's it's uh beethoven it's it's not b-sides it's the real yeah, stuff no, no. we got some stuff. really good ones up there <laughs> Um, at, at some point in the future, we'll do something that's a little more poppy, but we wanted to kind of show off what we were doing. So th this will be a, a really good, um, and I think Nita has got this, um, the link published below the, below the picture here. So go, go there and, and, um, and get some free albums. You know, one thing I would mention while we're talking about Cobas, um, and then I'm going to shut up, um, is that uh, um, I am a huge music biography fan. I love to open up a book on Muddy yeah, Waters yeah. and read through that. Um, you know, currently I'm reading the Chris Franz book on Talking Heads that just came oh. out a few days ago. Oh. It's fantastic. But what I love to do is while I'm listening and reading through this book is go to Cobas and find those albums and put them in my headphones. So while they're describing the studio sessions and what happened and went on and you know all that, you're listening to the music that was created from that and you got a really great point of reference in the best possible quality that you could listen to it. So that's a way to augment, almost an augmented reality from just a physical book of reading these biographies for these musicians is to listen to the music they made while they're talking about it. Mm, great idea. Yeah, Sue Jan uh, actually is is the head of pretty much everything music here, and she's hired. Do you remember Robert Baird from uh, Stereophile, who's a music reviewer? Uh, he's now working for us. He's working for Sue Jan, oh. and he's writing a ton of this, either reviews or uh, panoramas. But yeah, that's a really, really big deal um, for Cobus, and one of the things that really sets us apart is the editorial. Uh, we've got more editorial than anybody by a long shot, including uh, including um, um, Amazon. So if you're in that for if you're in this for the metadata and you really want to learn about music and you're interested in the artists and little different cool stories, uh, check out some of the panoramas or the editorial on 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 your favorite artists. Um, so what have we what have we left out, guys? I mean, we definitely want to do this again. You're too much fun not to do this with again. What have we learned today? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, anything that you guys want to, to leave uh, the audience with? I have a question for Jill. Have the cops been called on you yet? No, but we did talk about outdoor speakers, like some solutions that we're cooking up at Klipsch. And I said, my solution right now is just to turn up my speakers and open up the window. So I, I have not, I've not had the cops called on me, but. Maybe okay. they enjoy my, maybe. The okay. I'm just going to say it right now. If you haven't had the cops called on you with that system, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or she has super cool neighbors. Exactly. Maybe they Mug can't hear very well. 
my favorite meme these day these days. It it has been for a while. It, it it's just like my neighbor. Can you believe it? My neighbor was banging on my door at three o'clock in the morning last night. The good thing I was still up playing my drums. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, gosh, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join us. We we really appreciate it, and um, just love having you you folks on. So, so what are we in for another one of these, or is this it? I'm down. Let's do it. Jill, you won't go on vacation with us, right? I mean, you won't go on <laughs> vacation. We, we'll... If I could sneak one in, I would, but we'll see. Well, we're gonna. There are, make it. there are a lot of questions we have to answer. A lot of great questions. Yeah, make sure everybody, if you weren't tuned in earlier and uh, you're wondering why we're not answering questions, it's because f few of us outside of Jill can walk and chew gum at the same time. So we're just kind of concentrating on each other. However, just like last uh, couple of weeks ago, I was up, I think that first night to 1.30 in the morning answering questions. You guys had some wonderful questions. I'll leave the ones for clips, two clips, and I'll, I'll answer the ones for... Um, for Cobus, but hey, another great good time with you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you, David. All right. Thanks, well, Dave. this is Cheers. going. Uh, this is going to be it, and so we're going to say goodbye to everyone. Cheers. Stay Have safe, healthy. Listen to music. It's good for you. Amen. Better That's than TV, fun. right, Jill? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.